The Starship is ready to launch any day now. The craft has completed several tests and is poised to take to the skies once more. But what should we expect from this launch? Let's talk about what SpaceX has done to get the Starship ready for this historic moment and when we can expect the FAA to finally grant the company a launch license. It's incredible to think that only six months ago, Starbase resembled a chaotic battlefield right after the first Starship launch. At that time, there was widespread concern that the damage inflicted on the launch site might push back the subsequent launch by a year or more. Some even went so far as to suggest the necessity of replacing the entire launch deck. However, surprisingly, just half a year later, we find ourselves with a fully assembled second Starship prototype that's primed for launch. How did we reach this point? Following the successful integration of Ship 25 onto Booster 9 for the fourth time on October 20th, everyone was eagerly anticipating some Starship-related activities by the 22nd. As anticipated, just two days later, the road leading to Starbase was sealed off, the launch site emptied out, and the orbital tank farm sprang to life. This marked the beginning of the chilling process essential for fueling, as pumping large quantities of propellant through pipes at ambient temperature would utterly destroy them. Shortly after, the familiar frost ring began to form on the liquid oxygen and methane tanks of Booster 9. While this site is recognizable to many, have you ever wondered about its origins? A common misconception is that the frost seen on Starship consists of frozen oxygen or methane. However, that's not accurate. Starship's fueling process involves cryogenic propellants. Liquid oxygen is supercooled to around minus 210 degrees Celsius or minus 346 Fahrenheit, while methane is chilled to a slightly less extreme temperature of minus 180 degrees Celsius or minus 292 Fahrenheit. Due to Starship's limited insulation, these cryogenic propellants cause a substantial drop in the rocket's temperature. Moreover, the air surrounding Starship usually contains a certain amount of water vapor, commonly referred to as humidity. Particularly in coastal regions like Starbase, humidity levels tend to be quite high, a trait shared by numerous spaceports. When Starship's supercold surface comes into contact with the humid atmosphere, the substantial temperature contrast causes the water vapor around the rocket to quickly freeze and crystallize. This phenomenon, called deposition, leads the vapor to solidify directly, bypassing the liquid stage. That's why the frost observed on rockets is essentially frozen water. For a simple demonstration at home, pour a cold soda into a warm glass. Within minutes, frost forms on the glass, similar to the icy exterior of Starship. During liftoff, this frosty layer partially breaks off, generally not posing a concern, especially for Starship. This effect can also be observed in footage from Saturn V launches. The significance of this frost formation lies in its ability to indicate the amount of propellant inside Starship's tanks. In a specific instance, we observed only a partial fill of Booster 9. It was then quickly emptied, only to be refueled a few minutes later. This could be SpaceX's method of testing the orbital tank farm before the actual launch. After this trial, the water deflector was put into action, completely submerging the launch site. This was the inaugural use of the third massive water tank, and it was evident that this test had a heightened intensity. The water release beneath the orbital launch mount serves a crucial purpose. It prevents the flame from the 33 Raptor engines from melting the entire pad, a vital safety measure. Despite having successfully endured static fires, the true assessment of this unique deluge system will occur during the actual launch. Intriguingly, these deluge tests are ongoing, even as the fish and wildlife services continue to evaluate the system's environmental impact. There are two potential explanations for this situation. One possibility is that SpaceX is pushing forward, taking the risk of potential penalties, as the delays likely incur higher costs than the fines themselves. Alternatively, the Fish and Wildlife Services might have already completed their evaluation, found no environmental hazards, and quietly permitted SpaceX to continue testing without public announcement. The day concluded with a test of the engine purge system, a crucial feature upgraded to prevent onboard fires during the upcoming launch. Jumping ahead to another two days, on October 24th, following a thorough cleanup of the launch pad, the road leading to the site was once again sealed off. By 1 p.m., venting could be seen emanating from the launch tower, indicating that internal pipes were being chilled in preparation for propellant loading. Soon after, both liquid oxygen and methane started to flow into Starship's tanks, signaling the commencement of a wet dress rehearsal, WDR. In a WDR, the rocket is loaded with real propellant, closely simulating the protocols followed on the actual launch day, except for the absence of engine ignition. The fueling process took about 90 minutes to complete, hinting that recent upgrades to the tank farm might not have been entirely integrated into the main system yet. After the test concluded, Starship was safely emptied of propellant, followed by another round of testing for the water deflector. SpaceX promptly shared an update on Twitter, confirming the successful test and announcing that the rocket is primed for launch, pending regulatory approval. Looking ahead, what remains to be done? Surprisingly, very little. A static fire has already been completed, and redoing it would only invite more potential issues. 
The surrounding infrastructure has undergone thorough testing as well. The sole task remaining, simply fueling Starship one last time and launching it. SpaceX has also made some major progress at the build site. In the high bay, we are currently witnessing the simultaneous assembly of three ships, one of them being Ship 32, which is rapidly taking form. On October 24th, its common dome section was seamlessly integrated with the main body of the prototype. What remains for this prototype is the mid-liquid oxygen section and the aft section, commonly referred to as the engine section. Once these crucial components are added, Ship 32 is expected to be briefly rolled out before being brought back inside for the installation of its flaps. Adjacent to Ship 32, both Ships 31 and 30 are receiving their final touches in preparation for their testing at Massey's. Positioned in front of the bays is the ring yard, functioning as a temporary holding area for various Starship components. These activities underscore the bustling progress and constant evolution at the build site. From a bird's eye view, we can see that the yard recently welcomed the hot staging test article that was previously stationed at Massey's. Its future remains uncertain. It might be scrapped, or perhaps the ring could be repurposed for a future prototype. Moving to the rocket garden, there's a newcomer. Following modifications at the payload processing facility, the Starship crew mock-up has found a new home at Starbase. Recently, its aero covers were removed, sparking speculation that Starbase engineers might be preparing this prototype for a potential showcase to NASA. There is hopeful anticipation that SpaceX will soon provide a glimpse of this prototype's interior. Given Starship's upcoming role in transporting Artemis three astronauts to the moon in just two years, the world is eagerly awaiting insights into its internal layout. Moving to the Star Factory, remarkable progress is evident in the new phases of the building's construction. The section adjacent to the old Star Factory is essentially complete, with significant headway also being made in its neighboring area. Additionally, wall panels are rapidly being installed in sections close to Highway 4, showcasing the swift pace of advancements in this crucial facility. In the background, an array of air conditioning units is lined up, ready for installation on the factory's roof. The abundance of beams and various parts indicates that the expansion of the Star Factory is far from reaching its conclusion. However, it appears that the construction of new foundations for the building's next phase is the only aspect lagging behind. Perhaps this deliberate pace is a strategic decision, considering there is still ample work to be done in the current factory area. At the Sanchez site, the focus is on the rings, receiving meticulous attention. The prominent white engine installation stand now features its most crucial component, 10 motorized arms meticulously designed to secure the super heavy booster. Intriguingly, right beside it, there are not only the Raptor lift platform, but also components for another potential stand. Considering that SpaceX already has one stand in the Mega Bay, it seems they might be planning to have two such stands for each bay. Not far from the Sanchez entrance, a pair of black rings catches the eye, adding to the intriguing developments at the site. The prevailing theory suggests that these black rings could potentially serve as platforms for booster spin prime or static fire tests. The exact location for their intended use remains a mystery. However, recent developments indicate that we might get some answers soon. 17 out of the 20 hold-down clamps have been installed in the first stand, a clear indication that its completion is drawing near. Additionally, the ring to the left is likely to receive its arms soon, given the presence of 20 arms positioned nearby. As SpaceX continues to make progress, securing a launch license from the FAA remains the pivotal step. Ironically, Starship has been prepared for launch for several weeks. SpaceX's senior vice president stated, We've been ready to fly for a few weeks now, indicating that the rocket is fully prepared and the team is poised for action. After enduring frustrating delays, it appears that the clouds of uncertainty are finally clearing. The launch date for this highly anticipated rocket now seems clearer than ever before. In recent months, our attention has shifted significantly towards the developments surrounding the FAA launch license, diverting focus from the actual Starship rocket. This frustration is not unique to us. Even SpaceX has grown weary of the constant holdups. Their concerns were voiced during a recent Senate hearing, a pivotal discussion where major players in the American space industry, including Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic, echoed similar sentiments. In this crucial dialogue, all participating companies unanimously stressed the importance of safety. However, they also highlighted how the FAA's current licensing processes have become obstacles in the face of rapidly advancing space technology. Among all the companies, SpaceX's concerns were particularly prominent. This was not merely because they voiced their issues more vocally, but due to the frequency of their launches, a rate that surpasses that of any other company. Regulatory obstacles impact SpaceX significantly more than others. Just consider the numbers. In 2023 alone, SpaceX successfully launched 74 rockets. This impressive count includes 69 Falcon 9S, 4 Falcon Heavies, and the much-discussed Starship. With a goal to launch 100 rockets by the end of the year, 
It's no exaggeration to say that we're witnessing a SpaceX rocket soaring into the skies nearly every other day. During the recent Senate hearing, SpaceX strongly suggested that the FAA should increase its team size. They even recommended doubling their current staff to expedite processes. In an unexpected move, SpaceX offered assistance in the recruitment process, showcasing their intense determination to accelerate the progress of Starship's development. Interestingly, SpaceX's proactive approach appears to be yielding results. Several signs now point to an imminent launch in the near future. Firstly, a Coast Guard advisory was issued, warning mariners of a potential rocket launch in Boca Chica, Texas, scheduled for early November. Although this doesn't officially confirm SpaceX's launch date, it indicates heightened activity in the area, hinting at preparations for a significant event. Another compelling clue is NASA's recent scheduling of the WB-57 imaging aircraft. This specialized aircraft is designed for high-altitude reconnaissance and is equipped with infrared imaging capabilities. It played a crucial role in monitoring SpaceX's first Starship test in April. Beyond Starship tests, the WB-57 has been utilized to track SpaceX's Crew Dragon during manned missions, highlighting its significance in SpaceX's operations. This scheduling suggests that SpaceX and NASA are gearing up for a significant event, adding to the anticipation of an impending launch. Furthermore, one of the crucial steps SpaceX took in preparing for the highly anticipated launch was conducting a wet dress rehearsal at their Starbase facility in South Texas. This involved loading the rocket with fuel as if it were on the verge of launch without actually taking off. It's a critical process to ensure that all systems are functioning as they should. SpaceX took to Twitter to share an update on this significant development, stating, Starship and Super Heavy were loaded with more than 10 million pounds of propellant today in a flight-like rehearsal ahead of launch. Their excitement for the upcoming test flight was evident in another tweet later that day, where they declared, Vehicle is ready for the second test flight of a fully integrated Starship, pending regulatory approval. While awaiting clearance from the FAA, SpaceX is diligently testing its Starship Prototype 26, a model specifically crafted for NASA's lunar landing missions. This prototype stands as a testament to Elon Musk's profound vision of transforming humanity into a truly interplanetary species. Musk envisions a future where vast numbers of humans can journey not just to Mars, but even farther destinations in our solar system. However, the path to this ambitious goal has not been without challenges. The initial test flight of the Starship resulted in an explosion due to an issue with the upper stage separation. Despite this setback, Musk remains remarkably optimistic about Starship's chances of reaching orbit in its upcoming attempts. This optimism is further underscored by the fact that SpaceX has already secured numerous major missions involving the Starship rocket, indicating continued confidence in the project's potential. One of the highlighted missions for SpaceX is Dear Moon, set to be the first all-civilian trip around the moon. This ambitious venture is backed by Japanese billionaire and entrepreneur Yusaku Maizawa. In March 2021, he announced plans to take members of the public with him on this historic trip. Maizawa has invited people to apply for a chance to join him and eight selected artists on the Starship for this extraordinary lunar journey. Beyond Dear Moon, there's the Artemis 3 mission, a significant NASA endeavor aiming to land astronauts on the moon. If successful, this mission will mark the first crewed lunar landing since the Apollo missions, showcasing the pivotal role that Starship might play in advancing space exploration in the coming years. In addition to the Dear Moon and Artemis 3 missions, there's significant excitement surrounding the Starlink 2. Zero missions, SpaceX's advanced internet satellite system. This project underscores the versatility and capability of the Starship vehicle. Last June, Elon Musk shared a video from a presentation made to SpaceX employees. This video included a captivating clip showcasing Starship releasing the upcoming Starlink 2, zero satellites. With the advent of Starship, SpaceX plans to launch these larger Starlink 2, zero satellites before the main Starlink 2. Zero launches. SpaceX has already sent a few batches of the smaller Starlink 5 2 minis into orbit. These preliminary launches serve as test runs, ensuring the technology for the comprehensive 2, zero satellite system is up to par. Several years ago, SpaceX made the pivotal decision to select South Texas, specifically the Boca Chica region, as the cornerstone for its monumental Starship project. Boca Chica's geographical advantages, situated close to the equator, offer optimal launch conditions by harnessing Earth's rotational speed. Moreover, its proximity to the Gulf of Mexico and the vast Atlantic Ocean to the east provides a safe buffer, effectively mitigating potential risks to populated areas. Beyond the physical benefits, Texas's favorable legal and regulatory environment has been a significant boon for SpaceX. The state's pro-business policies, coupled with tax incentives tailored for aerospace companies, have substantially lowered operational expenses for the company. Additionally, Texas boasts a rich pool of talent due to its numerous technology and engineering institutions, providing crucial support for SpaceX's ambitious goals. The Starship project, in particular, 
has not only introduced advanced technology to the state but has also brought economic rejuvenation, especially to regions like Brownsville. This area, which once held the dubious distinction of being one of the poorest cities in the US, is now experiencing positive transformation and growth due to SpaceX's presence and its innovative ventures. And that's not all. Once the Starship is finally ready, the economic benefits it will bring will not only be limited to Texas and SpaceX, but the entire USA. So what do you think? After all of this recent progress, are the FAA and FWS finally ready to approve Starship's second launch in November? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.